Howdy y'all, welcome to 5-ish Minute Reviews, and uh, I got another 5 for you today. First up is uh, a kind of an interesting one here, uh, itty bitty little guy. Just recently uh, picked this one up from uh, Kaiser Sale as these guys were discontinued, along with the horn that I had uh, taken a look at just a little bit ago. Uh, this one's a bit difficult to uh, actually open up with the thumb studs using it with the thumb however um well if you're not absolutely terrible uh reverse flick actually ends up working out great this is the kaiser shard uh, as we can see from the itty bitty little thing there uh this is a dirk pinkerton design and a very very tiny one here um as is uh kaiser's kaiser's tradition they use a lot of um, fairly high quality micarta, uh, and this one is, um, you know, just among them. Uh, they don't really use a whole lot of uh, really run of the mill sort of stuff here. Uh, however, this is an older model. Let's see, there we go, an N690 blade steel. It's not uh, my absolute favorite, but, uh, you know, it's all right. It kind of uh, sits in that area of. Um, uh, maybe right around 440C, if not just a, a touch better. Um, or VG10, kind of uh, somewhere right around in, in those kind of ranges there. But uh, yeah, it's all right. It's baller steel. So um, most likely made in Austria, but could be made in uh, Germany as well. It just depends on um, which uh, foundry is actually um, producing the stuff at, at any particular point. Uh, yeah, this thing is small, but, uh, is quite mighty. Uh, as we can see, it's, uh, basically a, uh, three finger or, you know, 2.75 sort of thing going on there. Um, very much a, uh, well, we can call that a, uh, modi modified Warren Cliff, but that is definitely a reverse Tonto. Uh, Yes. Um, whole bunch of jumping out there, and that does, uh, really give you a heck of a lot of power in there. Um, unfortunately, the way that this is designed, the plunge grind, um, is quite quick, but the, uh, blade comes right up against it. And there's also these thumb studs here, which unfortunately, um, they've changed this now on, on modern Kaisers, but, um, we don't really have any tooling on, on either of these things. Uh, I was able to actually remove them for uh, putting my own edge on there, uh, but it did require a couple of pairs of pliers and stuff like that because there was some uh, thread locker of some sort going on in there. Um, but after that, you know, it ends up working out all right. We have some uh, satin on the flats and uh, stone wash on the... Uh, um, on the, uh, the the grind going on there. Uh, I've put a 20-degree uh, edge on there. I think it was probably closer to like 23 or something like that out of the box. Still decently sharp, but, um, you know, I tend to uh, like my own edges uh, after the fact. Just because, uh, for the most part, I don't have to worry about uh, heating up of the edge. Um, that can, um, you know, kind of mess up the temper right on uh, the 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 edge or whatever of a particular knife. Um, and you know, a lot of other channels like, um, Pete from Cedric and Ada's channel, uh, rest in peace to, uh, both of his dogs. Unfortunately, I, I mean, he's got more pets and stuff now, but both of them are, uh, unfortunately out of the picture at this point. But, uh, yeah, he's kind of a uh, proven time and time again, that putting your own edge on a knife after the fact, um, does improve, uh, the, the cutting capacity of it and a little bit of that might be um, the reprofiling of an edge that might uh, happen but a lot of it really does have to do with um, refining and possibly taking care of some um, uh, mistempered steel because of uh, the uh, the belts and buffing wheels in the factory might uh, ruin a little bit of that but yeah there we go we got the pocket clip mounted with two screws all right two sun two screws um, for my carta. <laughs> Uh, and they're mounted uh, internally there. Uh, that makes it, uh, you know, difficult. So they didn't really bother to uh, allow you to um, swap the pocket clip on there. But uh, yeah, that ends up working out all right. We do have a lot of tiny um, T6 screws going on here. Um, 
the uh, the pivot's still a T8, but uh, yeah, this is a uh, pretty interesting knife, and one that I will come back to later in the video, because I have another one that's um, basically right up in the same family. But uh, yeah, there we go. Um, I don't know if I want to bother with a whole lot of stats and stuff like that. Probably not super uh, interesting to a whole bunch of folks who are just kind of taking a look at some knives. Uh, so next knife I have up here, this one, um, haven't had for a huge amount of time. It's another Tucson. This is a kind of a budget model and this is from Matt Szymanski. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Sorry. It's got a little bit of a smudging and stuff like that going on on the blade here. But, uh, yeah, this is a, a reissue. Uh, I honestly don't know what it was first put out in, uh, but yeah, the uh, the lime green and black uh, was the uh, the color scheme that that was gone for on it. We have uh, quite a large choil there, definitely not really fit for a finger. Uh, so this is definitely kind of a, a large sharpening choil here. We have these uh, large fat um, thumb studs, which uh, end up working as long as you get your thumb on top of it push down through and and up and it thwacks out with a heck of a lot of authority. Um, I do have one other knife uh, from Matt Szymanski, but it was a uh, collaboration with uh, Wong Design. I, did, I would try to grab it out of uh, my shelves, but I don't remember the exact number, so I would be uh, shuffling through a few of them. Don't really feel like cutting the video for it, but uh, so yeah. yeah, there we are with that. We have titanium mill pocket clip on this guy, though. One attachment point going into G10. Not uh, absolutely terrible, but still. I, I really do appreciate when uh, companies will have more than one attachment point for their uh, pocket clips. So it uh, does help save kind of the life of um, the uh, scale materials that they end up uh, using. But, yeah, this one's in 12C27, which is interesting because this is a fairly new knife. And they haven't really used a whole lot of 12C27. Yeah, for a couple of knives, I have another one that was uh, a reissue that uh, used it as kind of an experimental steel because they got some for some uh, kitchen knives and uh, had a little bit left over, so they made a few. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. This guy's kind of got a uh, thick handle going on for him. It does have a ramp up, which uh, for the most part I do appreciate, but I also do kind of like having some uh, jimping to uh, go along with that to uh, keep it so I don't uh, run over um, that ramp up there. But uh, yeah, the pocket clip ends up working out all right. It doesn't really uh, create anything terrible. You can certainly feel it for sure, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that this guy is uh, quite thick. Yeah, very much a budget model, um, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, there was never a, a fancier frame lock version uh, or anything like that uh, that was made. This was uh, basically it. Um, but yeah, outside of this one and the other one that uh, was a collaboration with Wong Design, I haven't really seen a whole lot from uh, Matt Szymanski, but um, yeah, they, they seem to make some uh, some interesting designs, to say the least. This is a 12C27, not 14C28N, um, which it's got some similarities, but uh, 14C28N is much more of a uh, uh, kind of a tweaked version of AEBL, whereas 12C27 uh, didn't really use that as a base. So there, there's quite a bit of uh, chemical differences between them. And 12C27 is uh, quite a bit cheaper. That's also why... Um, it is the nice steel of choice for things like open L's that are, uh, well, not the carbon uh, versions, but uh, the Inox versions, uh, which um, will basically mean um, stainless or rust-free, which you can also see on uh, some... German knives, uh, which we'll say like Rost Frey, uh, F-R-E-I or something like that. Yeah, whatever. Um, it's not a terrible steel, but, uh, you know, kind of like um, 
in 690 it is quite a bit much more of a, uh, a budget steel uh, but still interesting and I'm glad I actually have this other guy here we got a decent um, amount of uh, lock bar access going on with it as well but yeah this is a G10 on G10 in case you were uh, curious on if that was um, carbon fiber inlays or something like that nothing super crazy fancy with it but yeah this guy was also quite affordable all right, next up, we have another Tucson. This is a Raihi design, and I like this guy. It's a budget knife. Uh, well, let's go ahead and open them up here, and we have modified sheep's foot. Um, it's a kind of a, a mid to a three quarter height um, saber grind so it's not a, a full flat grind um it does get uh, quite a bit of uh sheepdog xl vibes um definitely not quite the same you know the handle's nowhere near as thick and uh well this guy's got a uh, quite a large uh sharpening to not sharpening toil finger toil one that i can actually use on it it is uh d2 steel stone washed like I said, this is G10, um, but we do have nested steel liners on this guy, so uh, that ends up working out all right. The uh, the action, because the uh, the blade on this thing is uh, quite heavy, uh, ends up working out quite well. Um, fortunately, we don't have much in the way of lock bar access, so it is a little bit difficult. If you were wearing gloves, this might not be uh, the one for you. It is a little bit too difficult to um, disengage uh, after the fact there. But I do like that we have full steel uh, nested liners instead of, you know, just kind of a, some smaller things going on there. We have their standard uh, folded over uh, carry clip there. Uh, you can reverse flick it, but the detent is actually a bit strong. So I do find it a little bit more comfortable to just use the thumb hole in this particular case. And the uh, folded over pocket clip on this one in particular, especially because it extends past uh basically all of my hands or all of my fingers even uh without using the uh the finger choil up there ends up working out great it doesn't really uh feel uncomfortable i still notice it but um it's not really creating anything crazy like a hot spot pinch grip's great on it uh reverse grip works even though i don't really find a whole lot of use for that on this particular blade shape or anything like that but yeah this is just kind of a good solid um, you know, G10 and D2, uh, kind of knife, but also has that same kind of price. All right, next up, I got another Tucson. This one's really freaking weird. Uh, this one's enormous. Uh, this is a David Chen design. I think it's the 504. Yeah, TS 504. Let's see, we have a, uh, a very, very large, uh, we'll go ahead and call that a spear point. It's not absolutely symmetrical, but it's close enough that that's what I'm going to end up calling it here. We have um, micarta going on here. It is the uh, the canvas micarta, but they actually tried to dye it blue, and uh, it's up working out all right. Has a decent amount of texture going on to it. We have a, a fairly large finger twirl. I wouldn't mind it being just a little bit larger, but it also already looks pretty enormous as it is. We got the, uh, the folded over pocket clip as I showed earlier, and uh, in David Chen's case, um, I actually do uh, kind of laser his uh, insignia on there rather than uh, putting it on the blade like most of them do. The other thing that doesn't make sense is the liner. Uh, so much of it is exposed and out there and makes it not comfortable to hold this way. Uh, kind of forces you to try to use that finger troll, but like I said, for me, it's not quite big enough. Um, so this is an enormous knife that, um, you know, unless you grip it kind of way back here, which, hey, at least the, uh, the jimping still works with my thumb, uh, ends up not being all that comfortable. Um, I really would like to, uh, pick his brain on why he thought that, um, that much exposed liner was a, a good thing. I mean, certainly for um, people with gloves or <laughs> maybe even mittens in this particular case, might make a little bit more sense. I'm not quite sure. 
The, uh, the geometry on this guy is pretty good, though, and it is very, very stabby and uh, fairly reinforced at that tip with the, uh, the swedge kind of uh, ending right at it. You know, it's not all that bad if I do creep up on there, but I'm using the, uh, the hammer grip rather than, uh, than a saber grip sort of thing. So for that, excuse me, trying to muscle through um, some cuts, that's not as bad so you know there's that but um it's always strange when you're uh kind of forced into uh one particular grip or the other uh for a knife to actually be comfortable but yeah i don't really have a whole lot else to say about it it's got um steel liners they are coated you know in something or other it makes them kind of look gray uh they are not titanium Definitely not for uh, this being a little bit more of a, uh, a budget piece. And, of course, it's uh, in D2 steel because, uh, well, that's basically about the only thing Tucson does anymore these days. <laughs> okay, and the last knife that uh, I got some things to say about, and it's this guy here. This is a concept, or concept, however they actually want to be pronounced. This is the Main Street, uh, and this is the, uh, the crossbar lock variant that uh, just recently came out. Uh, I honestly didn't know that the full-sized Main Street uh, had ever released. The only thing I'd ever really seen anybody talk about was the mini Main Street and how amazing that was, and I always thought it was too small. But, um, you know, here we are. Uh, as I alluded to much earlier in the video, here's the Kaiser Shard. Uh, and it is, for all intents and purposes, the same knife, but shrunk down quite a bit. Uh, of course, this is the crossbar variant, but they did have uh, liner lock versions before then. Same blade shape, same handle, same thumb stud that's basically in the way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is. And then the mini Main Street would be kind of the, um, the middle between these two guys. But for all intents and purposes, same knife, just uh, quite a bit um, different. This one, of course, in a little bit higher end steel, 154 cm. It's still an ingot steel for sure, but um, you know, uh, a bit higher end than uh, I would consider N690 to be. So this thing is interesting. Uh, this is the, uh, the red and black uh, G Mascus version, um, and for whatever reason, let's. See. Yeah, we can see with the um, the light reflecting off there. This thing has an interesting texture to it. It's not perfectly polished. It does give you some grip, even though it doesn't have any kind of um, checkering or anything like that on there. Uh, I do appreciate that we don't have proud steel liners there. We do have jumping along the backside, which I'm not quite sure exactly why, but there we go. And then we got uh, some crenellation sort of things going on up on the top, but it doesn't fully really affect the spine. So you feel it, but it doesn't really add an amazing amount of uh, grip going on to it. Because we do have the, uh, the crossbar lock on it, though, um, it does force a lot of companies into uh, doing a better job on their uh, sharpening choils, and that's definitely the case here. However, this one, just like the uh, the Kaiser, didn't really have a great way to uh, remove these uh, these thumb studs here. Luckily, me putting a 17 degree edge on this guy, um, the uh, the angle for it didn't actually affect these things because they are cemented on. I could not get them off for the life of me. Uh, whether it was using a soldering iron or whatever to provide um, uh, heat or whatever to uh, try to work through whatever kind of thread locker they were using. I don't know. Um, so that's kind of annoying. Um, I always do appreciate the ability to remove thumb studs for, uh, you know, maintenance and sharpening and uh, whatever else. Maybe I want to take them out and replace them with something that has a different color on them. I don't know. Just something that uh, some folks end up doing. But uh, yeah, we got this uh, jumping on the back. On both sides I suppose that would maybe make sense if you were trying to use um, a bit of a uh, shut up phone I got plenty better um, 
yeah, if you're trying to use some sort of a reverse hammer grip for uh, self-defense or uh, fighting sort of things. But um, I don't think the handle's long enough for, for that in this particular case. It doesn't feel bad uh, gripping it around there, but at that point, I don't know what that jimping's necessarily for. And you don't interface with it in any other particular way. So, I don't know. Uh, another gripe that I have, this, uh, this crossbar lock cannot be disengaged by only one side. doesn't matter if it's the right side or the left side. You have to pinch both of them and pull it back to be able to, uh, release the blade. Which, uh, I guess if, um, that's the only way you've ever dealt with, uh, crossbar locks, I might not bother you all that much. Uh, me, on the other hand, I'm so used to um, dealing with that. This guy's a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, like my 940 or whatever, I was always used to doing whatever cuts it was and immediately putting it away super, super quick, doing whatever I needed to do. And you cannot, under any circumstance, do that with this uh, particular lock. I don't know, basically everybody else that I've seen from a uh, scene with crossbar locks, whether it's Benchmade or Hogue or Kaiser or, I mean, the one that Tucson made, I suppose, um, CMB, any of them, they can all uh, end up doing it. The only one that I've seen that uh, kind of had some problems with that was the uh, the original Cold Steel uh, Recons that uh, used those before they moved to the, uh, the triad lock. But... Um, yeah, so that drives me absolutely up the wall. Um, but still, the blade really, really nice and powerful. The geometry maybe not the uh, the thinnest in the uh, in the world. We are dealing with the three millimeter blade stock thickness, but um, it's still kept quite thick. Uh, so this does end up feeling like it binds a little bit more if you're uh, cutting through um, some thicker cardboard and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, with this uh, this really, really aggressive, you know, reverse Tonto slash uh, absolutely um, makes sense to call this a, a straight worn cliff, uh, which can be used for a lot of, um, you know, self-defense and martial arts stuff, like the, uh, the Yojimbo and Yojumbo from uh, Michael Janich, uh, th done through Spyderco and stuff like that, then, uh, you know, I guess that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, this does feel a little bit more heavy duty or hard use rather than, uh, doing some stuff that might require a little bit more finesse or, um, you're trying to do some long slices through, uh, something that, uh, might end up being bound up. But, um, you know, overall I do like the knife, but, um, you know, if they kept the, uh, the plunge grind, basically the, the, the same where it's very, very short down to it. And, uh, they had the ability to, uh, remove the thumb studs then um, I think the liner lock version would probably be right up my alley or my main street. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing I do want to say is the action on this thing, when you do pull back on that um, on that uh, crossbar, really, really fantastic, though. But there we go. There's the uh, concept uh, main street. We have the Tucson TS-504. We got the Tucson TS-421. We got the Tucson, uh, what was this, 168. And we got the Kaiser Shard here. But, uh, yeah, those are the uh, most recent ones that I've uh, got and uh, had some time to uh, play around with and uh, form some opinions and things on. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got now. So, uh, as always, appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Subscribe.